delighted to welcome uh, Garnet and super middleweight centre Agbeko to the channel. How are you doing, sir? I'm I'm doing great, Danny. Thanks for having me, and thanks for you know giving me this um, avenue to you know to meet more boxing fans. That's not a problem. I think uh, this is the first time we've had you on the channel, so I think the the first question really is how does a a good amateur from a boxing hotbed in Ghana end up in the United States playing their trade as a professional? Well, I mean, we all know that um, to be successful, and it's hard to be successful just staying where I'm from, you know, Ghana. And um, I, I knew it right when I started boxing that, you know, eventually I'd either have to move, you know, to Europe or somewhere in America to be, to be you know, to, to give myself a shot at winning a championship. All the champions before me had to do that. Azuma Nelson, Aikote, uh, Joshua Clote, uh, Joseph Agbako, uh, BK Poison, all of them from Ghana. So I knew that it was it was inevitable that, um, you know, that I would have to pursue that path considering that I was winning all my fights in, in uh, Ghana at the time. Um, I just didn't think it would take this long to, you know, to get a shot at a championship or, you know, to, to be where I'm at right now. So, um, but it, it's always better late than never. So I'm just happy that, um, you know, I'm, I'm where I am right now. So how did it actually happen? Was your talent spotted by someone back home or did you reach out to people in the US? Um, actually, I had a um, a friend uh, back home who, who actually, he was actually the son of uh, the owner of the gym where I trained. So he, you know, he was friends, he was very close friends with somebody here in the U.S. who, who you know, actively does the African name fighters. He helps them come over and helps push them. So, you know, it was it was perfect. I was, I was in Ghana, I was doing pretty well, and he was the son of the owner, and he wanted to give me a shot. So he connected me to... Uh, this other Ghanaian who lived in uh, who lives in Maryland, and uh, we started the process. Actually, started the process while I was still in college in Ghana. So right when I uh, finished, uh, it, w it wasn't even a month, and I was on my way to the U.S. to to you know to pursue my uh, my goals of becoming a champion. And how did you find the kind of early stages of that professional career? Because you were often on either the right hand side of the card or you know, going up against people that maybe were brought in to win the fights. You didn't have uh, you didn't have everything handed to you, I think it's fair to say. How did you find that experience? I mean, uh, the the Ghana part was like, I mean, I always trained extremely hard and I never really like um, trained based off who I was facing. It was just, you know, one goal in mind to win the championship. So their approach to every fight was the same. And, you know, some fights, like most boxers would tell you, some fights are easier than others, you know, and some more difficult. So it was pretty much, you know, just routine experience for me. Obviously, my first fight in the U.S. was, you know, my um, my most challenging fight because it was also my first loss. Um, I attributed to a lot more than just, you know, my skill. It was definitely more anxiety being on the biggest stage. And, um, I mean, I talked to the opponent years later, and he, he, he said I hit him harder than... Um, he'd ever been hit and he definitely felt like it was definitely you know the stage and I had to you know take my time rewire retrain my mind to deal with you know that level of stress that level of anxiety and that's something that I feel like you know a lot of trainers don't prepare their fighters enough for they they prepare them physically and in some cases mentally but then it's it's a type of pressure that they don't really prepare them for and you you kind of are introduced to it while you're in there and and it's not everybody that's built to, you know, deal with it. it doesn't, that doesn't determine, you know, your caliber because it, we are all, I believe that we're all capable of being programmed to do whatever we need to do. And I feel like it's a very important part of training that uh, coaches need to start, you know, um, helping their, their wards understand better. So, yeah. Now, I believe you traveled widely across the United States for different training methods and, and different sparring. Tell us some of the names you've sparred and, and perhaps who you've learned the most against. Um, the, the first sparring that I really learned something from that was really uh, good was Badu Jack. You know, he, that sparring session, he, he taught me to be patient, you know, like, uh, it was where I really learned the pro game. It's like it's it's patience, and you, you whenever you 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 try your best not to make mistakes. Obviously, and you have to train to do that, and you look for those spots. And as soon as those mistakes are made, you get punished for it. So it's like it just 
it, it was just an eye opener that experience for me and I was like okay so this is what it's like really to be at a very very top level there's a lot of patience not not you know being slow but just being really patient and just you know looking for your moments while setting traps and whatnot so I learned a lot from that experience obviously uh, my star Peter Cullen too he was he was also a great great um uh, champion that I got uh, I got a chance to learn from um my most recent being uh Bitabiev uh, wow. light heavyweight you know all knockouts he he's a power puncher he's a He's an absolute animal, and I had the honor and pleasure of helping him get ready for, um, alongside others, I helped him get ready for um, uh, and, and Anthony Anthony Yard. So, yeah, so that was also a hell of a great experience for me. But outside of that, I've fought, I've fought so many people, like some don't really come to mind right now, but I've fought so many people, and some of them for years, across gyms in New York, in Miami, in, in in California, various cities in California, um, you name it, uh, Houston, you know, just all across the U.S. The only place I haven't really been is um is the Northwest. That's the, pretty much the only place that I haven't been in the U.S. to really like. But that's also because there really aren't you know that many boxers who play their trade in the Northwest. So, um, I'm I'm very well traveled. I've seen various coaches train their athletes, and even when I'm not being instructed directly. You know, I kind of pay attention and try to learn what I can. So I've, I've truly really been um, a student of the sport and traveled all of us to try to learn what I can. You talked earlier about the mental aspect of the sport and how you could be programmed to deal with certain challenges. You went on a winning run after your first defeat that you talked about earlier. And that culminated in a, a victory, a dominant victory on paper, and certainly in the ring as well against Roy King the aftermath of which wasn't what you would have intended. Just talk to us a little bit, if you don't mind. I know it's a sensitive subject, but about how you dealt with that situation. Yeah, for me, you know, um, it was hard for me to deal with initially because right after the fight, even, you know, I mean, the man passed a year after the incident, mm. but I was so emotional. I cried in the rain, you know, but I, I kind of drew a little solace in the fact that I didn't feel entirely responsible for it because of um, the actions that he may have carried out that I felt like, you know, put him in that position himself. And I had a chance to meet his mom, his wife, and his sister, you know, three of the most important women in his life. And his mom actually kissed me on the cheek, you know, the rest, uh, his, his, um, um, his, sorry, his, his mother kissed me on the cheek and his wife and sister, they were very nice. They were very nice to me. So, um, it kind of also, you know, took a lot of the weight on my shoulders and it took it took me a while to really like wrap my head around it because it's 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 very unnerving when you think that that could have been you. Like, because I, I'm thinking of, OK, I go in there with my family and I never walk out again. And the thought of that is just, you know, devastating. And I don't want that to ever happen to anybody. So it took me a long time. Uh, initially, I thought I, I could just readily deal with it, but I had to do a bit of, you know, uh, therapy. I did do a bit of therapy to help me deal with it. And then, of course, I led right into my fight with Vladimir Shishkin, which is also my record. That's something that maybe we might talk about on the line. But, um, but yeah, that was how I dealt with it. It took me, it took me a really long time, but I believe that, you know, I'm over it. And um, I, 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 I definitely wish his family the best. And I still intend, you know, when the time is right to visit his, his hometown. And, you know, he, he has a gym there that um, he had, he, he um, yeah, has a gym that's still personal. So I want to be able to support um, what I can of, you know, what he helped create when, when I can. And you mentioned the Shishkin fight there. It seems like it was only days after Roy King actually passed away. As you mentioned, it was over a year after the contest that he, he sadly passed. But it was just days before your first fight since then against Shishkin. Did that weigh on your mind at all going into that fight? I mean, at the time, I felt like it didn't really bother me, but I feel like it may have weighed on my mind. Although the performance, I don't think the performance was affected in any way or form by it. Um, you know, this, uh, I don't I don't want to go back to the past because, you know, I've made my peace with that fight. But at the same time, too, there's a reason why all of Vladimir like, Shishkin's fights are available on YouTube to be viewed, but my fight with him is nowhere to be found on the planet Earth. 
You understand? So that in itself tells you what really happened that night. Two other judges gave him every single round. When, you know, even on the show, Showtime telecast, <laughs> round by round, he didn't have highlights. I mean, I cut him well over the eye, almost to the bone. And in any of the, if I was, if, if he was the opponent, trust me, the fight would have been stopped. But they let it carry on. You know, and at the elite level, you can't expect to always win by stoppages. Everybody trains to the best of their ability. So sometimes these contests are close and they all they go to the cards. It doesn't mean that, you know, just because I wasn't able to knock him out doesn't mean I wasn't that dominant. And, you know, it, it was given to him. It is what it is. So I have since moved on from that. Obviously, I didn't let it deter me. I have kept training, kept my path, kept working hard because I know what I'm capable of. And I believe even if you talk to Shishkin today, he'll 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 have a lot of good things to say about me. As I have, I think he's he's a hell of an athlete. Uh, he he's a he's a really good fighter who has you know every fighter with an undefeated record definitely has like unlimited potential in terms of like earning capacity and what they could become as a star. So you know my hats up to him. But um, yeah, that fight I believe was judged unfairly. But I've moved on apparently from that all that, and you know I've I've created my own path that I'm still on. And you obviously haven't suffered defeat since you've beaten some good fighters along the way. And you've linked up also with Salita Promotions. Just, just tell us how that came about. Well, so Salita, we haven't really uh, worked in an official capacity. But mind you, so I, Vladimir Shishkin is, is inked to Salita Promotions. Sure. So after fighting him, I was seeking a lot of opportunities. And I kept reaching out to, you know, Dimitri Salita to try to give me, you know, shots and whatnot. And initially... There was um there wasn't much you know that I got back but um my it was just my desire to keep going I I sought out a new manager uh, who repeppers redirected you know my career and that culminated in like two really good wins you know um the first being against John Thompson and then the second being against uh, Winfred Harris which I won uh, where I won the WBC US Super Middleweight belt so shortly thereafter. There was an event that Salida was putting on in Atlantic City, New Jersey. And it just so happens, you know, the main event, the, the opponent fell out. And, you know, I was up for consideration. So luckily, you know, I we I had maintained good contact, good relationship with them. And uh, I would be, you know, I, I took the fight on a two-week notice. And I went in there and did what I was supposed to do. And I believe that is what initially earned me the shot at Morrell for the fight that we were supposed to have in April. And then, of course, everything else happened. That kind of blew it out of the water. But, um, yeah, well, I guess we'll get to the, that. When we get to that, I'll, I'll talk more in depth about that situation. Well, yeah, as you pointed out, that you were supposed to fight uh, David Morrell, the WBA regular super middleweight champion, earlier this year. Um, and you can talk to us a little bit about why that didn't happen then. But the rumor is that it's, it's, the fight has been resurrected. What, what can you tell us? Well, yeah, so the fight is very much uh, in uh, in play now for December 16th. And, you know, everything works out the way it's supposed to work out. The, the first uh, fight, I don't know what happened. It could have been an error on the part of the radiologist. But I also blame the Nevada State Athletic Commission for not following due process because they asked me for a second opinion, a qualified second opinion, which I sought from a neurosurgeon who has over three decades of experience who was like, hey, uh, I don't know what this guy said he saw, but I don't see anything wrong with his brain scan. There's no aneurysm whatsoever. And even if he had an aneurysm the size that the radiologist said, those types of aneurysm, an, aneurysms are not known to rapture from trauma. Mm. Yeah, so there's no chance of anything happening to him in the course of the fight. And the commission chose to overlook this. And of course, they were quick with replacing me. I felt like, you know, again, it's a feeling. I can't, you know, I can't say for a fact that that was what happened, but I, I, I feel like, you know, they were more than happy to replace me. But I am more than anything, I am just happy that, um, although I, I, I'm just happy that I have the opportunity again, although I do feel that their hands have been forced because of my onslaught on social media, in addition to the fact that uh, Morel has presented himself as this um, mythical creature that everybody should be scared of, so nobody wants to, yeah, nobody wants to fight him, and I'm the only guy out there who's willing to take on this challenge. So they're like, okay, fine. If he wants to take on the challenge, 
you know, and and to be fair, like Morel, you know, I don't think he's done anything to deserve a shot at the likes of, um, you know, Benavides or the Canelos that he's calling out. He's still nine and zero. He can take his time and build his record. He needs to. He needs to get tested. So, I mean, this is this is right. This is only right. Um, you know, he's been highly touted. There's been a lot of talk about him. I'm just glad that they came back around because ultimately, the way boxing works, I know that they could have gone with anybody else. They could really could have gone with anybody else, and they really could have created a narrative to suit that. Sure. And um, and yet, you know, they came back around and decided to work with me. So I'm I'm grateful to God for that experience, uh, for that opportunity. Um, and um, come December 16th, as as now, I have signed my portion of the contract, and um, I believe it's on because it was uh, it was officially announced earlier by a uh, boxing scene. So as of now, you know, there's nothing left to do but um to but to fight come to, uh, December 16th. What would you make of Morel as a fighter and where do you feel you hold the advantages that will be key on December the 16th? I, I, I feel where I have the advantages is what is unknown about me. And that's that's a lot of them look at me and they look at my knockout ratio to look at my physique and then the assumption is that you know it's it's a lot of power and they're right yes i do have that pop i do have that power but there's also a lot that they don't know about me which obviously i'm not going to reveal here they're just going to have to find out in the ring come december 16th my morale you know i i'm and i'm i'm not the type to berate fighters make them seem less than they are no he's, a, he's an excellent fighter i mean of course no one would even believe me if i said people would think i was crazy if i said oh look He's he's no good fighter. He's an easy fighter. He obviously packs a punch. Um, he's very skillful. I think he's also a little unorthodox, and that's what really like you know a lot of fighters struggle with because his punches come from very different angles, uh, more, far different from you know your traditional uh southpaw. So that's one of his biggest strengths, just the the peculiarity of his approach, you know, to his punches, how he puts the combinations together. Um. I definitely feel like um, he he hasn't been tested, um, and of course he's he's on a high right now. So and and he's entitled to that. He's done everything. He's gone rid of every opponent in front of him so far. So he's absolutely entitled to that. Come December sixteenth, we know we'll just pit our strengths against each other and see who comes out on top. As you said earlier, you don't feel he deserves just yet the fights with the likes of Canelo and Benavidez. If you're to defeat him on the 16th of December, do you then deserve those fights for beating Morel? Um, absolutely. I feel like the more than anything, you know, I've been in the game for a very long time. This will be my 10th. This is my 10th year in America. And and at this point, after and this will be my 31st fight. So, I mean, what 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 am I waiting on at this point? You know, why Why wouldn't I be given the shot at a bigger name? Why wouldn't I be given a shot at one of the more, I mean, the, the much bigger names? How many more fights do I have to have? So, and of course, he's a younger fighter. You know, he has fewer fights. And he needs to take his time and build himself into, you know, whatever he wants to be. But, of course, my plan is to derail that and show that, okay, I am this formidable force who also needs a shot. I've been working hard at this for the last, you know, 10 years of being in America. So, I think that I absolutely deserve a shot at Canelo or whoever it is, you know, that will give me a substantive, who will give me a substantive belt at the division once I get past Morel. December the 16th, that show isn't just historic for the fact that you could win that regular world title. It's also going to be the last show, unfortunately, for Showtime in the boxing yes. world. What does that mean to you to be a part of something like that? I mean, the first time I heard that that was uh, that was the nature of the show, that was going to be the last Showtime telecast. You know, for me, I, w I was in awe. I was like, wow, like in all the years that I, I boxed and trained, I never imagined that I would be headlining, you know, the very last <laughs> boxing show, Showtime. So I definitely, of course, it's one that's going to be memorable, going to be, you know, etched in the, in the history books. And I feel like for every time that show is talked about, every time the the contribution of Showtime to boxing is talked about. That last show will be brought to bear. So it's absolutely important that I create a positive image of myself in this fight. And the way to do that is to make sure that I win this fight and win this belt and leave my mark edged forever as, you know, 
the the last guy to win a championship in Showtime boxing. So it's a very it's a big deal for me. Um, I try not to think about it as much because it's all part of you know just you know not mentally burdening yourself and just focusing on the task at hand. So for me, yes, it's it's in the back of my mind, but it's not really there. My my goal is to go in there, take it round by round, and get the job done. And just tell us a little bit about your life outside of the ring and outside of the gym. Do, do you have your own family uh, now in the U.S. or and what do you get? Yes, up to I, you I, I am. To? I am. I am married uh, with no kids. Um, my it's it's very hard. I I hardly have a life outside of boxing. It's my wife too. She she loves the sport of boxing. She she's dedicated to it. She supports everything that I do. You know, and uh, she's part of the reason why. Um, you know, I've really stayed true because she's been very, very supportive um, the whole way. I've had a, a tremendous amount of support around me, you know, my friends. And, you know, it's true what they say, that when you truly want something, the universe aligns to bring all the right people around you. And it just so happens that, you know, my friends, my coaches, all these are people who are all into boxing. So they help me keep the focus, you know, and, and drive where it's supposed to be headed, and that's boxing. So maybe, you know... After I win a championship, you know, or, um, you know, I feel accomplished in the sport, I can, you know, um, I can explore some of my other interests. I have a lot of interest with, in writing, uh, also journalism. I have a bachelor's in communications. Um, I mean, I, ha I do have a novel out, uh, The Masters of Voodoo, and then I actually have a children's book that is, um, is yet to be published. It's, it's all ready and everything, fully illustrated and everything. So... That's also all, those are all things that I need to explore. And um, I have uh, an eventual, I have interest in eventually going into uh, management as well, uh, event, you know, event planning and whatnot. So those are all interests of mine. But until I accomplish my sole objective of winning the World Championship and being recognized as one of the greatest fighters to come out of Africa, all those are going to be on the back burner. Yeah. That's a huge objective. One of the best Absolutely. fighters to come out of Africa. It's a storied history, isn't it? I know, right? It's and it's it's a little late to be starting it, but it's better late than never. So, you know, I, I'm just grateful for the opportunity again. And you know, fighting uh, Morel in Minneapolis, I understand that I'm going to have to knock him out to win because I don't think that you know, unless it's a total domination, total masterclass for twelve rounds, I doubt that the judges will give it to me. So. My goal, my objective for that night, which I'm training for very, very much so, is to knock him out. And and that's it. Knock him out. These are going to be, this is going to be my referee. This is going to be my judge right here. So, <laughs> so that is the plan come December 16th. And I'm not playing about it. So. Good stuff. Now, just before I let you go, just tell the viewers out there how they can find you on the different social media platforms. Get to know a bit more about you before the big night. Yes, absolutely. So, of course, my, um, you know, just so long as you have the correct spelling of my name, Sena Agbeko, it's Sena Agbeko together on Twitter. Uh, you can search for the same on Facebook, Sena Agbeko. On Instagram, it's Assassination. So, A-S-S-A-S-S-I underscore nation. So, A-S-S-A-S-S-I underscore nation. So, um, that's uh, because I'm the African assassin, the assassin, um, I consider, you know, my my whole group of supporters and my team the assassination. So hence the handle assassination. So they can definitely find me on there. And I post a lot of, you know, fun training videos and just, you know, my hopes and aspirations on there if they're interested and want to follow. Excellent. Well, really, really appreciate your time. Very best of luck. Uh, Thank you, Danny. The 16th of December. And let's do this again, hopefully with a belt over your shoulder. Absolutely, that's the plan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Take care. Right. Enjoy the rest Thanks of your so day. Much, Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Take care. Thank, Thank you. So you.